So, I got all my ducks in a row now. I have understanding. So what have I learned? As I look back and reflect on everything that transpired in my life, I know that the enemy will come after you as a child. Doesn't matter, no respect to your person, just like God. His mission is to get you to not follow God. Why not attack a child? Why not distill fear in a child in the early years, especially if you know this child is destined to do God's work. I look back on, on a lot of things that transpired and a lot of things I didn't mention. Um, and I can see God moving from day one. I can see the Holy Spirit moving from day one. Now, in Pastor Strick's class, I learned and I understood that we are spirit. The spirit is the essence of who we are. The soul is our is the container for the spirit. Now, I said in the beginning that um, spirits, they have no authority in a physical realm. They need a body and they need a soul to function here. So we're spirits. We need our body and our soul. Right? The, 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 or Satan and his demons, they, they, they cannot occupy the same space that the spirit is in. I don't know why. Now I understand the Holy Spirit, but I'm talking about man's spirit. I don't know anything about possession. I was never possessed by any spirit or demon, although I did do constant battle with them and I do constant battle today. Case in point. Um, after I returned back to Pathways with the so-called, I mean Pathways with the so-called changed mind, I'm not that guy anymore, and I'm not. Over time, the Holy Spirit continued to minister to my spirit who continued to do battle with my flesh and the soul. You see, the flesh, the flesh and the spirit battle for the soul. How can I put that? I, I don't even know how to put it, you know, because it's still new to me. Right. But they're battling for the consciousness of the soul. The flesh wants it to stay in the world and have all the worldly delights, carnal, carnal Christian. Right. And the spirit wants the soul to follow God and all that he offers. And it's a constant battle back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Even after you say now, I've been under teachings, especially at uh, Pathways where it's taught that as long as you are saved and have Holy Spirit and you believe that everything is done, meaning Jesus has finished his work and it's all finished, uh, an evil spirit can't touch you. This is entirely not true. I've lived this thing all my life and I think and believe that when I gave my life to Jesus at the rescue mission, I was saved. In order for that to be true, then I was never saved when I asked Jesus to come into my life. And if that be true, how are you saved? Because at Pathways, they say all you have to do is believe. And that's backed up by scripture. But I think it's more. I think it's much more than that. Anybody can believe for a moment and then change their mind. But we're taught that once you give your life to Jesus, you are sealed until the day of redemption, which is the second coming, Christ, right? But if I change my mind and I no longer want that thing, which a lot of people do, I did at one point, right? How am, how, how, how am I still redeemed? It's supposed to be a choice, my choice. There's a lot of uh, understanding I still need, and there's a lot of things I need to unlearn and relearn. Because although I was under some very good 
teaching from some very good pastors, I was also under some erroneous teaching from some very good pastors who got it wrong and some bad pastors that for whatever reason I listened to. You understand? So when the Bible says, get wisdom, get knowledge, and get understanding, or with all thy getting, get understanding, it is our duty, our reasonable service to do just that. Because this is a battle for the mind. And the mind is the playground for spiritual warfare. All spiritual warfare is fought right here. Sure, you can have external manifestations, but the, they fight for control of the soul's conscious mind. You understand? Both sides. So that's telling me that the soul is the core of who we are on this planet. Now, the soul is in control. Neither the spirit man nor the flesh man can take control on its own and do what it pleases. It may seem that way to a lot of people, seem that way to me, you know, but from what I've learned, that's not possible. The soul who makes all decisions or final decisions must submit to either side before that side can take the lead and have control, but it will never have dominion because the soul can always change its mind and take that leadership that he gave to either side back. So this comes to mind why the Bible continually tells you to renew your mind. Romans 12, 1. Right? Renew your mind. So let's take a look at this thing. When you are reborn, it is, it, is, it is just that, reborn. Now, once you're born, you are a child. You don't know anything of that in which you were born in, either this world or God's kingdom. You understand? So you have to come to God like a child, even though you might be an adult, you might be a child, you might be an adult, you might be an old fart. You know what I mean? But God looks at you like a child. You don't know anything. You don't know how to walk and move in his kingdom. You don't even know what his kingdom is, although a lot of people claim they do, right? His kingdom is simply his rules and regulations, how he governs his space, his kingdom, okay? His king, uh, the world's kingdom are the rules and regulations set forth by the government. That's a kingdom. Bible refers to kingdoms all, uh, all in revelations. Rules and regulations. You understand? Maybe not, but due diligence is required to understand that thing. And I put a lot of work into this. And I find I didn't have the understanding that I have now back then. This is why, one of the reasons why I was fluctuating, being a carnal Christian. Because I held on to a lot of things in the world that I just didn't want to give to God. There's this hymnal called, Is Your All on the Altar? We used to sing that at the rescue mission, oh my God. And it made me question. You know, I heard Creflo Dollar say a lot of people go and put stuff on the altar, but they hold on to some things. They don't put it all up there. And when you leave the altar, hold it on to those things, those things become prominent and dominant in your life. They still plague you, and you don't know why. I didn't. What did I hold on to? Cigarettes. We. Cocaine for a time, you know, but the Holy Spirit continued to do his job, minister, no matter how knuckleheaded, hardheaded I was, never gave up, still works. I have been able to put away the cocaine voluntarily, not through a detox program or a uh, rehab program, because let's face it, they can't take it away from you. They can only give you a place for your body to detox. Very few uh, rehab places, excuse me, offer you the ability to detox and renew your mind. And what I found through my addiction, yeah, man, I can go to detox and I can get this stuff out of my flesh and my flesh will become submissive and yeah, I can put my mind, you know, back to where, uh, where I want on God's thing. But 
The Bible also talks about strongholds, pulling down the strongholds of the mind. And if I took that away from the altar, if I held on to that man, I got one more run in me, so I ain't gonna put it all up there. You know what I mean? And a lot of us do that. And it's just not about drugs. It's about whatever is uh, hindering your walk with God. If you're not ready to give it up and you don't get that thing out of your mind and renew it, meaning replace it with something of God, it's only a matter of time. You know what I mean? Before you fall again, Colonel Christian. If you haven't put it all on the, on the altar, you are a carnal Christian. That means that you still have the lights in the world. You, you're, you're not 100% submitted to God. And I don't know if I am yet because the last thing to go are cigarettes and I'm still smoking. And I don't want to no more. So I know the Holy Spirit is ministry, but my flesh in that area is dominant. This ain't, man, you ain't gonna put those down. As soon as you put that thing down, I'm gonna I'm make you frustrated. I'm gonna piss you off, man, so you can, you know, you're gonna light up, trust me, bruh. And I can hear my flesh saying that. And you know what, he's right. I'm weak in that area, so how do I strengthen myself? You strengthen yourself through the word of God, in prayer, in prayer. You got to get that stuff out of your mind. You got to tear that stronghold down. You understand? If you don't, it's just going to hinder your walk. It's going to be a hindrance towards the blessings that God is trying to instill in you. A spiritual gifts, a spiritual power. Your spiritual power, like mine, will be limited or hindered in a time of need. If you're still holding on to these things. This is what I've learned. This is what I now understand. Feel me? And now that gives me greater power to deal with this thing. Once you've done getting, once you gain an understanding of something, then you can deal with it. I mean, remember when you were when you were uh, kids? You know what I mean? You got your, your 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 toys for Christmas, and some of the toys required assembly, and they 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 gave you uh, a manual for instructions. But your dad said, oh, don't worry about it. I, I, I can put it together. Or somebody in the house said, I can put it together. And they did, but it just wasn't right. There were some extra pieces that should have been in, but they ain't in. Oh, don't worry about those. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sooner or later, that toy break or won't work right. <laughs> I mean, I do that a lot, right? And I've seen that done a lot, right? But this is what I mean. You know, if you don't get an understanding with all by getting, Get understanding of this thing. Sooner or later, you're going to be spitting in the wind. And the devil is going to capitalize on that stronghold that you won't lay on the altar and allow the Holy Spirit to minister and take away. Here's something, right? Um, recently, recently, uh, well, let me, let me give you the background, right? I have five kids. And because of the monster I was, you know, thinking, oh, I love my kids. I'm doing anything for them. But, you know, I just wasn't clicking with my kids because of one problem or another. We don't need to get into all that because it's just too complicated for one, right? And it's none of your business for the next. <laughs> you know what I mean? But seriously, right? I've had a bad relationship with my kids after they got into their adulthood. When they began to understand adult things or begin to learn adult things, they had out with me about some issues. And our relationship was torn apart. You know, I was no longer popular with them. Matter of fact, they avoid me now, off and on. You know, say they come and go, you know, as they fluctuate, right? But my youngest son, my youngest son really surprised me, man, because we were the closest. And we were the ones that spend more, the most time together as father and son. And it got to the point where this dude just didn't want to talk to me. I thought he hated me. And that hurt. That hurt so deep. It cut deep. I got to tell you, because I love that. Hell, I bet that, 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 that man. He's not a boy anymore. That man. Right? I mean, we had arguments. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, what, 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 what happened? How did this thing deteriorate? I remember when this dude was sitting next to me, and I taught him how to play Nintendo. And he used to idolize me. Now, he... he so anyway, long story short, right? We, we, we just stopped contact. We stopped our contact. You know what I mean? Very rarely spoke. We spoke as by text. And um, <clears throat> so I, you know, 
we hadn't spoken for what, about maybe six months. And I was missing them, man. I was missing them. And I was talking with God during that six months, not knowing that God was still ministering to me, right? And I'll tell you about that after the story. But um, yeah, I'm telling me, hey man, I'm, 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 I don't know what's going on with me and my son. I'd love to, to work that out with him, but now I don't have the opportunity. Well, fast forward about six months later, just a couple of days ago, right? I called my son. Uh, no, about a week ago, I called my son. And surprisingly, he answered. Normally, he doesn't answer. You know, and then he might text back, what? Right? But he answered. And I noticed on the phone that, you know, his disposition wasn't as hostile as it normally is, but, I mean, still distant. It seemed like he was a little irritated that I called because he doesn't like to talk on the phone. I don't like to text. So we don't mix oil and water, right? And uh, he asked me, what did I, you know, what did I uh, call for? What did I need? I said, I don't need anything, man, other than to talk to you. I said, you're my son. I miss you, man. I said, um, I know we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, but, you know, I like I like to communicate just to let you know. I mean, just just for you, you know, for me to know that you're okay. I said, I'm here anytime you need you. I said, no matter what is between us, man, I love you to death. You're my son. You know, all right, all right, Dad. You know what I mean? We hung up. Fast forward a week later, just about three days ago, this still called me. I looked at my phone, said my son's name, Buddha. What? This dude called me, okay, what's wrong? Something's wrong. So I pick up the phone, hello? Waiting for him to give me some bad news. You know, the, what other reason would he call? You know, considering our relationship, right? He just wanted to talk. He just wanted to talk, what? So, you know, we began to talk. And um, I told him, hey man, I'm not that guy anymore. I'm not that angry dude anymore, man. You know, I said, I know that I, you know, I screwed up uh, in the beginning, but I'm not that guy anymore, right? And the difference in this conversation was is that he listened to that and he received it. And I could tell by the tone of his voice because it got friendlier and lighter. And then he hit me with it. He's turning his life around. You know, he had a son, right? He has his first child, but he didn't. He wasn't ready for it, didn't want a child, so he had to deal with it and play Mr. Mom because of his relationship with his girl, you know, and, and, and go through the visitation rights and all the stuff that I did, you know, <clears throat> experience the child support and all that. And he felt inadequate as a, as a dad towards his son. He wants to do more. So he wants to go back to school. But he lives with his mom like I did. You know, he lives in the basement, right, in her house. You know, she's married and all that kind of stuff, right? But he doesn't want to be there. You know, him and his mom have some issues, but he, he can't like me. He can't afford to be other anywhere other than he is and live the way that he does, right? He's tired of that, and I know he is. I felt it in my spirit, but I know because I did it. Not that he hates his mom, but you don't want to live with your mother when you're a man. And you got kids looking at you and you living with your mom? Come on, man. Nobody wants to do that. In my case... That's the only choice that I had other than shelter. You understand? But in his case, he has had more opportunity and he knows it. He asked if you can come live with me, would it be okay? That, that, that's only God. Because the first time we tried this, um, he asked you to come live with me uh, about maybe what, five, six years ago. And when I was that angry dude, and I started putting down the law and all these rules, stupid, McNupid, why would I do that? But that's just the disposition I was in at that time. And we hit a nerve, we had a conflict. He said, look, get it, I ain't coming with you. And he didn't. And I, I, I regretted that for the last five or six years, and I always wanted to make that up. And now I got the opportunity. You see, this is how God does. He still meant, he gets he gets these things out as the more well, what's the what's the saying the closer you get to God the closer you get to you you take a step towards him you take two to you well this is true I know it's catchphrases but this this is true you understand Holy Spirit is always ministering always got stuff in motion you know what I mean for the time that for the acceptable time as the Bible says and I guess now is the acceptable time I'm not that guy anymore. 
And I need to be a father to my son who wants to be a father to his son and change his ways. And I need to guide him, no matter how old he is. I heard Crepo Dallas say, only the father can impart who he, who, to the son, who he is. Only the mother can impart to the daughter who he is or, or who she is. And that makes sense to me. Excuse me. So I have the opportunity to reconnect with my son now. My life is becoming more complete by the day. Uh, I remember saying uh, just a little while ago, man, I must be dying because God is just blessing me with everything that I want, everything that I think I want. I've been wanting a dog for like 10 years. Got a dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm blessed with this apartment. You know what I mean? There's no way, shape, and form I should be living like this, but I am. You know? So yeah, God is truthful. God is faithful. You know? But he, like the, uh, it says in James, he won't give you more than you can handle. <clears throat> and baby steps. He's taking me with baby steps, which is allowing me to change. Cocaine's gone. Weed's gone. The anger is gone. Although it pops its head up every now and then, but it's gone because I can control it now. Cigarettes are the next to go. I lost my taste for them. I'm only smoking it because the body is crying for it, but that might not happen too much longer. You understand? I don't want it. I want a clean life and I want to live for God and I want to live for my family. You understand? And God is making this happen. And he has endued me with that power that he promised in the book. You know what I noticed? Like I said the other day, uh, I woke up with my back hurting and, and I prayed in tongues and, and, and that pain went away and I was pain free. I was pain free all day until I lit up a cigarette. Now I'm not walking in that thing anymore. I'm agreeing with the world. The pain in my back slowly came back. Keep your mind stayed on him in all thy ways, right? So being a carnal Christian isn't the answer. Having the best of both worlds, you can't come away from that, that altar holding stuff in your hand like, you know, I'm going to keep this for a little while. If you want to be power powerful in this thing, you understand? Limiting your blessings and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to move in the power and authority that God gave me. I wanted to do that all my life, not for self gratification, but to help others and be a blessing to others. This is how I live. Whenever I go to any church, I don't walk on the door. Oh, you know, I want to be a pastor. So can I study on you? Or I, I want to be a deacon so I can sit on the board and do this. No, man. I mean, that's fine if that's what you want to do, if that's your calling, but that's not me. I'm a servant. I'm a servant. I gravitate to the ministry of helps, and I'm good at that because I delight and I enjoy doing that. And I was at Third Baptist, right? I was at Third Baptist, man. I was blown away by the usher board. Oh, man, I wanted to be an usher so bad. Wear that black suit, white shirt with the white gloves. Oh, man, do the usher step. You know what I mean? I wanted that to be me. And that happened. I joined the usher board. You know what I mean? And I had that black suit on with my white white gloves. But what happened was when it came down to when it came time to do the usher step, that fear gripped me. And I was all off beat. <laughs> I didn't look cool at all, so I, I had to get away from the usher board after that. I was embarrassed, right? People said, Damn, they, you didn't they you look like you was you were stiff, like you were scared. I was. And, and, and that brings something else to mind about uh, going back to that lady that used to be in my bedroom as a kid, put that spirit of fear in me. When I, when I, went, to, uh, when I went to the rescue, I'm mean, not the rescue mission, the third Baptist, I wanted to praise my sister Wilkerson and sister Wise and them. I wanted to give it all to God. I just wanted to, ah, you know, dance around the church with, the, with the, you know, the dance that they do and all that. But fear gripped me like people were looking at me. Oh, wow. And I wouldn't even feel the fear. I could barely breathe sometime when I wanted to get up. I love the choir. I love the choir sound. And when they hit, it goes through me. And I got a story for that in a minute. When they hit, it goes through me. It goes through me. And I want to, you know, raise my hand and just do this. But 
I tried to, and I'm, I'm frozen. It took me three services to stand up. It took me another two services to raise my hand. And I don't know how many services it took me to actually relax and do that. But after a while, I didn't care who looked. I just joined in the praise. I didn't give it all like Sister Wilkerson. And I just never could. I don't know why, right? But at least I'm praising. I'll tell you about the choir thing, right? The choir thing, man, when I was um, driving a cab, okay, I was living with my, uh, with my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, uh, Buddha's mother, okay? I was driving a cab to make ends meet, man, and I was good at that. But, of course, in the cab, you get paid cash money. And I was dipping and slipping in that. You understand? And I was driving, I would drive my cab from like about 6 to 12 and from 12 to 6 because you drove 12 hours, right? From 12 to 6, I was in the crack house. I always disappeared after 12. They do it. Don't, don't contact 5-5. Five, five. I go cab number 55, 5-5. Five, five. That's what they call me, 5-5. Five, five. They said, 5-5 five, five is done after 12. 5-5, five, five, done after 12. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, so anyways, I was on an all-nighter in 5-5, five, five, right? And um, I, um, I, I, I got done early with my escapades and I, I came back into the mix about four, about four o'clock in the morning. You know, I wanted to get some cash, you know, to go home with because I knew that my girl needed some loot and I spent it all, right? And it was slow. And I was parked downtown right outside this strip bar, right? And um, I was listening to the radio, you know, just trying to wait for a fare so I can get me a, you know, get me a free box, right? And Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror came on the radio. I'm high. I mean, I'm high, for real, right? And I'm um, tired, because I've been up all night, you know what I mean? And um, I began to listen to the words of the song. I'm looking at the man in the mirror asking him to change his ways. No message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make the change. Once again, man, just like in the mission, I began to boo-hoo in that cab like a baby. I was crying. Snot was coming out of my nose and when I was crying so hard because it made me look at myself and who I had become and what I was doing. Do you understand? I got to look at myself and make the change. So I, I, I got myself together, got caught a couple of fares. I got that money. You know, and I went home, but my girl said, you know, because this was a uh, Saturday night turned into Sunday morning. You know what I mean? And um, she wanted she, me to drop her, 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 her daughter off uh, at the church so she can go to Sunday school early. I'm still high, I want to go to sleep. So, okay. So we all got into the, uh, my personal car, I dropped the cab off, my personal car, and uh, I drove to the church. And me and my girl, we were bickering because she knew what, what was up with me and, and she wasn't feeling it. She said, at least you could do neighbors, take Tiffany inside. She knew what she was doing because that was a church. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll take her inside. You know what I mean? So I told you know, you know, got out of the car, grabbed the hand, you know, we walked to the door. And uh, as I got closer, you can hear the organ music and all that. You know what I mean? And you could hear, you know, a low sound of people singing and whatnot. But when I opened that church door and that choir sound came out of that church and went through my body. Whew. Oh my God. Oh my God, the feeling. If I was never saved, I was saved right there. And all I could think about was Michael Jackson's song, Man in the Mirror, Man in the Mirror, Man in the Mirror, Man in the Mirror, Change Your Ways. Change Your Ways, Man. Man in the Mirror, Change Your Ways. That's all I heard in my head. And I ushered the baby in the door and I shut the door. And I couldn't move. I couldn't move, I was stuck on the stair. I heard a horn, bam, bam, bam. Would you come on? I couldn't move, I was frozen. And I was crying. That choir sound wrecked me. It convicted me of everything I was doing. You understand? God ministering once again. 
always never gave up every step of the way. It was a battle. This was spiritual warfare, man. And most of the time, I was not equipped to fight it. I was losing battle after battle after battle. You understand? But back to the present, back to today, I am equipped now. The missing element I've acquired. I speak to things now and they happen, they move. I heal myself. You understand? Last piece of the puzzle to get out of there is the cigarettes. And this is what I'm working on now. So, overcoming the addiction through the, through the anointing is an ongoing process. An ongoing process. You were expecting a victorious ending, right? No. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. And if anybody tells you it does, they're lying to you. They might not have been attacked in, good, in, in a long time, but they've had their issues because the enemy only flees for a season. Nobody knows what a season is, and that's scripture. If you're looking for the victorious ending, you'll have to wait till I'm, till I'm dead and I'm glorified in heaven or here, wherever it's going to be. You understand? But just know... I'm walking in power and authority now. In my mind, it stayed on the anointed one and his anointing. The great and mighty walk. The great and mighty walk. I adopted that title from Dr. John Henry Clark. I'm not stealing it from you, brother, but I am borrowing it because I enjoyed you and I enjoyed your book and I celebrated your life. I love you, man, and I never met you. You make changes in me. And I do this in honor of you, sir. A great and mighty, ah, a great and mighty walk overcoming addiction through the anointing. I hope you've been blessed by my testimony. I hope you learned something. I hope you gained something out of it. Thank you.